Hello ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Channel Hot Monkey and welcome to the start of what is hopefully going to be the first fully fledged series on the channel since quite some time now. Now as you were able to tell by the title, this one is going to be all about the classic Splinter Cell missions. Now we'll get deeper into that during the video and during the series of course, but for now the idea is to go back to the roots of Splinter Cell and sort of relive some of the moments that define this game and talk about the experience those moments created for so many fans out there. Without too much small talk, we are going to start the first classic mission with a opening cinematic and for those of you who played the game, for those of you who are die-hard fans of Splinter Cell, it will immediately be obvious what particular mission we are going to be going through in the next 20 minutes or so. Here it is. down in Georgia in 15. I'm already done. Lambert? Hey, Irving, do you read me? Tell her I read her. He reads you. Good. You ready to get to work? I'd feel better if I knew what was going on. You know what you need to. The CIA lost a mole inside Georgian President Combe Nikoladze's cabinet. Her name is Alice Madison. They sent in Agent William Robert Blaustein to find her and lost him too. Are we working with the CIA's cooperation? Blaustein is outfitted with subdermals just like yours. That'll be your best lead to find him. You didn't answer my question. We'll tell you what you need to know. You're not out there alone, Fisher. Through me, you're attached to a dozen of the best NSA minds we have. There are political complexities with Georgia you'd need a week to understand. I've just about memorized the speech language. Well, start believing it. This is third echelon's maiden voyage, and we need it to go smooth as butter. You're about to touch down in Georgia. Get ready. For the first episode, I was actually thinking of doing the CIA HQ mission from the first game, but since I did a fresh install of the game on my PC, I had to go through a few missions until I would get to that one. So after I completed the training level and got to this one, I just immediately got a rush of nostalgia and... After hearing that beautiful music from that previous clip and seeing this level, I just remember getting almost the exact same feeling I had the first time I played it. I was just like, this is beautiful. So at the moment, there was absolutely no doubt for me that this mission was going to be in the first episode. Let's just take a moment to appreciate this atmosphere. This is the atmosphere of a true stealth gaming masterpiece. Now for those of you who don't know, for those of you who have maybe gotten into the whole franchise and some of the newer installments that came along the way, this is the first real mission in the first Splinter Cell game. So it's taking place in the capital of Georgia and our goal is to find out what happened with certain missing American agents which is just the start of the story of the first Splinter Cell game. But I'm not going to talk about that right now. First, I want to tell you why I wanted to make this series. There's actually a couple of reasons. Number one, I wanted to create an opportunity for myself to bring the consistency of my videos to a higher level. These sort of gameplay videos and commentaries are actually the easiest and funnest way that I could actually achieve that. Number two, I wanted to bring more gaming videos to the channel and because a lot of the subscribers are already here because of Splinter Cell videos, then I thought what better series to do than a Splinter Cell series. The third reason why I decided to go with this particular series with this particular theme and title is because I was really serious about making a video in which I would do a countdown of the top 10 Splinter Cell levels. After thinking about it a bit more, I actually decided not to go through with the idea because not only would it be hard for me to be objective, 
in the eyes of the fans, it would actually be also impossible for me to stay true and objective to myself, because I personally have a few Splinter Cell missions that I truly adore, that I think are masterpieces, and then after those, there's a whole bunch of them that I really like a lot, and I just see no possibility for myself to be objective in choosing just 10 of them. So for now, the goal for the series is to make three videos from three classic Splinter Cell games. That is the first Splinter Cell, Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow, and finally, the holy grail of stealth gaming and the Splinter Cell franchise, Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. But what's going to happen after that, we'll see. That was pretty tight. You still breathing? Doing my best. Good. Blaustein's black box is your next objective. He's running standard agency tradecraft. You'll find the box behind a fake bookshelf or wall panel. So, for the first part of this mission, there wasn't really much to do. It was pretty straightforward, Hello? and the gameplay Who's can there? begin just now. Put Gringo on. Because those are my orders. I speak to Vyacheslav Grinko or nobody. As Grinko, yes, sir. This is Ketevan. We finished searching. Now we could have just let this guy finish his little speech, but since we took him down now, we can take these lights out quicker than we would have taken them out if we let him finish the speech. And this way, the guy that is in the apartment will be alerted, so he's gonna come out. And after he comes out, we can just progress through the apartment easily. And it's just little things like these that make Splinter Cell what it actually is, or what it was in the days of the classic Splinter Cell games. It's about minding your surroundings and doing things at the right place at the right time so that you can finish the game in a stealthy fashion. Now, in the early days of Splinter Cell, the levels and the behavior of the enemies was pretty linear, pretty predictable, but for the time when it came out, it was actually top notch. And if you played the first Splinter Cell as many times as I have, then you can almost memorize the behavior of these guards by heart. But still, uh, the whole enjoyment of the game for me was figuring out these alternative routes and figuring out when to make certain moves in order to finish the level as stealthy as possible. Any reason the CIA wouldn't know about this? Nope. Nicer than the share. The subdermal went offline six hours after he died. Last active position was in a police station a few blocks away. Check your ops at. Now, remembering the first time that I played this game, or this particular level, I remember being truly amazed by the amount of details that the developers put into the design of the level. But what really quickly impressed me even more was the amount of detail that was incorporated into the gameplay itself, because before I played this game, I remember playing another game that was labeled as a stealth game, but... You could call it a first-person shooter more than anything else, and the game was called Project IGI, I'm Going In. I remember I beat the first game back when I was in high school, and then when the second one came out, I expected it to be a good game, because I remember having fun with the first one. And I did have fun, but once I beat the second one, I started playing Spirit Cell, and, you know, I was like, was that a stealth game? Because this is a stealth game, obviously, and IGI and Splinter Cell just can't be put under the same category. I mean, it's just as simple as that. I've done nothing. Please. Nothing? How about drunk and disorderly? Assaulting a police officer? Slandering the badge? You said we associated with criminals. Ah, then arrest me. I must sleep. 
Weren't you listening? The rent's gone up in jail. You want to die tonight? That's free. You want to sleep tonight? It'll cost you 100 lari. Oh, please. I don't. I don't. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> uh, now what are we going to do? But while we're at the subject of voice acting, while playing a Splinter Cell game, well, Michael freaking Ironside. I mean, I don't even need to make an articulate sentence here. While we're playing a Splinter Cell game, and we're at the topic of voice acting, bam, Michael Ironside, you know we're going to talk about that. Splinter Cell fans just love that guy, but a lot of them just love his voice. A lot of them don't know that Michael Ironside actually had a great contribution to creating the character of Sam Fisher that we know and love today. Because when he just got called in to do the voiceover for Sam Fisher, he was actually thinking about turning the job down. Because after he read the script, he kind of got the sense that Sam Fisher was a pretty cold guy without a lot of character. He just didn't want to be part of a project portraying a character like that. But because he was this hotshot actor after all, Ubisoft didn't want to take no for an answer. So what they did was they brought him in and had him work with the producers in order to put much more meaning in the character of Sam Fisher. And man, was that one hell of a good move. Because, and this is just my personal opinion, so don't go and murder me if you disagree but I played a lot of games and I personally think that there is no single character in gaming whether it's male female human alien or whatever that is loved for his vocal performances more than Sam Fisher and that's all thanks to Michael Ironside who not only made Sam Fisher sound cool, but actually built his whole character with his amazing, amazing voice acting. Unfortunately, he is no longer part of the Splinter Cell team. I personally have nothing against Eric Johnson. Honestly, I think he delivered an amazing performance in Blacklist, but this is going to be a topic for some other video. This one is about Splinter Cell Classics, so let's just stick to that, shall we? What the hell? And what can be more classic Splinter Cell than taking out light so that you can create darkness and shadows? Just gotta stick to those shadows, man. This is me jumping around, and it's so funny because it's so awkward after playing new Splinter Cell games when you can whistle or just kind of lure your enemies in the darkness where you want them. In the old games you would have to come close to them, not too close, but at least as close at the, so that they could hear you jumping around. And then they would come to that spot where you jumped. Of course you would quietly have to walk away so that they wouldn't find you and then when they turn their backs you just grab them or hit them. <laughs> Those were the days. Of course, this poor soul didn't really have to be knocked down. Of course, there is a way for us to get by him without even touching him, but I just didn't want to screw up now that I've gotten so far. And since the first Splinter Cell game didn't have any sort of rating system that would reward stealth gameplay, you could play the game in any style you'd like. For me, it was kind of always important to be stealthy and non-lethal. So sometimes I would take him out, sometimes I would just be a ghost. So this is the final part of the first mission, and in a few moments, I'll give you two more reasons why I love this game so much. First you'll hear it, and then you'll see it and hear it. <laughs> you'll see what I mean in just a few seconds.
the music and the split jump. Just listen to that music in this particular moment with this particular scenery. I mean, it just doesn't get any cooler than this. The first Splinter Cell game, in my opinion, had the best background music of any Splinter Cell game. And that particular music that just started playing once we entered this police station is just so perfect. It perfectly suits the style and theme of this sort of game. Now in the newer Splinter Cell games, I think it was from Conviction, I think, there was a move called Death from Above. It's when you drop down on an enemy from above. That move was introduced in the first level of the first Splinter Cell game. There it is. I don't think it was called Death from Above, but you could definitely do it. And it was definitely awesome. Anyways, you guys, this mission is slowly but surely coming to its end. If you remember from the beginning of the video, I said that our task was to find out what happened to certain American agents. Well, in this last part of the mission, we're finally going to find out what happened to them, and unfortunately, nothing good did happen to them. They're actually not in pretty good shape, and we'll see that in just a few moments. Right after we interrogate this guy that is, well, he's right there. One false move and you're dead. I need information. Um, okay. I'm looking for two Americans. Probably dead. I... Gringo will kill me. Where are they? Nearby. The morgue. They're dead. I helped the mortician find the microchips under their scalps. The subdermals. Yeah. Please don't hurt me. Oh, don't worry, sir. We're definitely not gonna hurt you. We're just gonna take out these lights so that you can sleep silently. Or to make it harder to find your dead body. I've got Agents Blaustein and Madison. Rest in peace. Somebody cut out their subdermals. Where do we go from here? We follow the subdermals if we can. Mm. There's a security camera here. Good thinking. We'll track the subdermals from the video archives. The station's surveillance room is on the top floor. Anyways, you guys, this first mission is just the introduction to the amazing story of the first Splinter Cell game, which was done by a Tom Clancy novel. And in case you guys played this game, well maybe after this you'll want to play it again. If you haven't played it and this is the first time you're watching uh, a mission in progress from the first Splinter Cell game, then I highly recommend that you pick up a copy of this game and try it out for yourself. You definitely, definitely won't regret it. But that is only if you would like to enjoy a great stealth game classic if you don't like stealth games then I don't know maybe it's not for you because I've learned that a lot of people who start playing a Splinter Cell game expecting it to be some sort of action-packed shooter tend to get disappointed because this game is not about that this game is about tactics it's about strategy even though it's not a strategy game I've talked about this in one of my uh, Splinter Cell Blacklist gameplay videos. It's not a strategy game, but there is so much strategy in it, and it's a game of patience and decision making. It's not just about, you know, running in there and shooting at enemies, because if you get shot once or twice, it's enough to get killed. This is a totally different sort of game. It's a stealth game, and if you we're disappointed in Splinter Cell because you started playing it expecting an action-packed shooter then you know it's really not objective to criticize it and say that it's not good it's not what you expected 
You should play another game like Call of Duty or Battlefield or whatever. It's not the game for you. But if you're in it for a true stealth game experience of decision making and patience and planning and executing, then replaying or playing for the first time a classic like this is something that you definitely and most certainly will not regret. Now, as this video is getting close to its end, I just want to remind you guys one more time that this particular series, Spinner Cell Classics, is going to have three episodes. This is the first of three. Uh, the second one is going to be from Pandora Tomorrow, and the last one is going to be from Chaos Theory. After that, we'll see where we're going to go from there. It's all going to depend on the viewership and your reactions, if you like it or dislike it. And I just want to call you guys to action so that you would let me know what you think about this whole concept and what you think about the idea. So if you've enjoyed it, please leave a like and let me know in the comments what you think about it and especially what levels, what classic levels you would like to see in future videos. So that would be all for this time. I want to thank everybody for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed. Stick around for next time because the next classic Splinter Cell mission is going to be from Pandora tomorrow. This is Channel Hot Monkey signing off. Mark a steady rise in Georgia's economy. Once central to the former Soviet Union's development and manufacture of weapons, Georgia has recently resurfaced as a potential player in the world military industry with active contracts in Russia, Turkey, Germany, and even has stated the need, especially in these times, for a reliable source of oil in the Middle East. Commerce Secretary Moore, on a visit to Azerbaijan this morning, noted the tiny nation's enormous potential for oil, calling on American investors to provide the necessary funds for tapping the reserves. In many ways, a leader from a bygone era. His beliefs are very firmly founded in Georgian orthodoxy. His political standings more in line with the early 20th century. Would you fault him then as a politician? No, no, not at all. Kumbe Nikolaitz is all politician. He's done wonders for the Georgian economy. A brilliant tactician. It's more a question of ethics. And ethically speaking? Well...